Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another afternoon session with Ag4CQ. Tonight's guest speakers are Jane Walker, who's the Community Engagement Manager for the Gas Fields Commission Queensland. Having grown up on a property in Dolby, Jane understands the complex and often emotional nature of relationships between businesses, landholders and the onshore gas industry. And our second speaker tonight is Noel Brinsmead, who's the Agforce Mapping Guru. He has 40 years as a cartographer, GIS analyst and project manager, of which the last 13 years has been with Agforce, using his knowledge to educate producers on um, how to map their properties and to support the ag industry. So the plan is each speaker will talk for 10 minutes and then uh, we'll uh, followed by questions after that. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Jane. Thanks, Sarah. Can everyone hear me? Can you hear me okay, Sarah? Yes. Yeah, and you can see the video, the PowerPoint? Yes. Great. Yes. Okay, thanks. And on behalf of the Gasfields Commission, I'd really like to extend a thank you to Agforce for inviting us to come on tonight and have a chat about what we can do in the space of um, the landholders that are experiencing any sort of interaction with gas industry or resource companies or anything that, that supports or helps them through this process. So I'm just going to quickly um, give you a little bit of who we are, if I can move my slide. So the purpose and the objectives of the Gas Fields Commission is to, um, well, we were set up as an independent statutory body and it was established under the Gas Fields Commission Act in 2013. But what it is, is it, we're there set up to, the purpose of us is to manage and improve the sustainable coexistence of landholders, regional communities and the onshore gas industry in Queensland. So we can provide a broad range of education, any sort of information and engagement support to our stakeholders, which can be broadly summarised as facilitate, review and advise. I'm just going to not go into those three just yet because I just want to briefly breeze over the next part, okay, um, which is who we work with, which will make it clearer when I get to the end of the PowerPoint as to why I want to go back to that. So we, we work with a group with a lot of government departments, as you can see on the uh, left of your screen there, uh, DNRME, uh, the OGIA, the Office of Groundwater Impact Assessment, DES, who's the regulatory uh, body within government. Uh, it's just recently, since the changes uh, within government, we're working with the Planning Group, the Queensland Treasury, DNR, uh, the Deve Develop Department of Regional Development and Manufacturing, DAF through our biosecurity extension programs and um, Department of State Development. So that's, that's where we work closely with all of those, but I'll explain a little bit later the reasons why and where we tap into those guys. Within the independent role, we work closely with the Land Court of Queensland and the Land Access Ombudsman. And then also in our non-government um, key stakeholders, which are predominantly landholders, but then also community groups uh, with which could be our, um, I haven't got it written there, but we work a lot with Cotton Australia, with Agforce, with uh, Queensland Southern Landscapes, with um, Chamber of Commerces, local government, local councils, our peak bodies, APA, QRC, QFF, we've got Agforce at Cotton Australia, and we also work closely with the research organisations at UQ at the Centre for Natural Gas and CSIRO and Jazeera. So there's a lot of key stakeholders that we work through um, and that may be in the different facilitate, review and advise roles within the Gasfields Commission. So if I flick now to the next one. Okay, so where we can help within um, the GFCQ is through online communications like the website and social media. Anyone can pop into our website and have a quick look around and there'll be a lot of information there that they can download for themselves or have a look at the latest and greatest of what's happening within that space. Social media channels, we can all log into Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook and um, LinkedIn. They're all different media channels that we use. Uh, live updates, notifications through our newsletter. The Commission's newsletter delivers tailored information, so we like to send that out. At the moment, there's, uh, we're going through a bit of 
uh, a renew of our newsletter and also our gas guide. So there are going to be revisions and updates to both those documents in coming in the next few weeks. So watch this space. And we're also going to focus on trying to do webinars like yourselves and update people uh, through webinars with the latest information surrounding a lot of our information workshops or information sessions, okay? So that'll be online as well, but that's not developed at the moment. We do a lot of face-to-face -face engagement, but, um, and that's sort of on an as-needs basis. So currently there's a lot of work in and around the Surat Basin with the release of the Arrow Gas Project. So we're working really closely with landholders out here to give them the information or give them the ability to feel like they can have an informed discussion when um, industry comes knocking on their door. But in other areas that we focus here in Queensland, we, we will be doing face-to-face, -face, but it, it really boils down to a as-needs basis, simply for the fact that the Gasfields Commission is only a really small team. There's only 10 of us, but I think the opening up of webinars and the different Zoom meetings that we've been able to do for the last six months because of COVID has really geared us and educated us in being able to support these mediums for us to be able to get our message out and be able to get issues or concerns channeled back into us quickly. So, um, I'll just move on to the next, I'm not really even, so I'm not really going to talk too much about the exploration program tonight because I feel that uh, DNRME are the custodians of this information. But what I want to explain is that we're certainly there in the new releases within Queensland. When there is a new release, we, we hope to be on the front foot of being able to support people in those regions once they actually do receive a letter from the government, um, just so they don't feel like they're left with not understanding what that all means. So geographically, we support where it gets released and that again, is on an as-needs basis. So, and these just are some of the areas that the latest Exploration Territory released, but I'm not, I'm really not gonna go into that. Okay, so some of the ways that um, the Gasfields Commission can help support landholders in this space is through certain workshops that we've already um, developed, and that's through property planning, like uh, developing property mapping, for a landholder who um, is engaging with the industry. So the property maps that we, we encourage or we, we sit and we talk to in groups of people is about understanding your property and your plan because you're the best person to be geared with that information to be able to be speaking outside with industry about your proposals of what you want to do and where you want to go. We also talk about a business plan. So the business plan that we talk about here is more about if, if in years to come, you decide to go organic, you, you wanna change your status to organic from or you, you're developing new parts of your property into um, opening up the land and, and maybe building a house for a, a son that's coming home. We try and get you to envisage a lot of the whole big picture of your property. It's not the here and now, it's for the five, 10 years down the track, potentially that this industry is going to be alive and where we need to you know, stage that focus. We also talk about biosecurity management plan. Now, this is a really big, um, this is probably quite, quite important to me personally, and as well as I know it's very important to AgForce and other NGOs about being able to support the biosecurity management plan that we need to develop for each property. We have found in the last year or so that a lot of landholders don't have an understanding of what that plan looks like. So what we've done is we've, we've engaged with landholders to, um, while they're doing their property mapping or planning in these workshops, to think about how to pull a biosecurity management plan together to support their ongoing business. So that's understanding risk and how to mitigate risk. And it's, it's quite encouraging to see people go, oh, I didn't realise that that was what we had to do. So I think with, with the um, biosecurity management plan, I can, in the last 12 months with the work that I've done with landholders, it's become really apparent that 
it, it was a need that they needed to understand better, but it's also um, supporting that best practice through uh, the, the farming activities that are uh, being taken place. So if I go on to the next slide, um, so it's important for you, everyone to understand what we don't do. The Gasfields Commission do not engage in individual commercial negotiations. Now, what that means is we don't get involved with one-on-one -on -one negotiations with landholders. We encourage them to seek advice to the appropriate channels, which is not with the Gasfields Commission. So I suppose what, what we've always encouraged through our information sessions is there's no actual wrong door. You can come to us and if there is a problem that you're having, we will direct you to the best possible place or where we believe that you should be, who you should be talking to. And I've, like recently, I've done a lot of that with DNRME, with their hotline and the focus on their issues that people have had. And 100%, it's been a 24 hour turnaround. They, they get back to them. It's just worked so effectively. And I just think that collaboration that we have with DNRME is really important for us to be able to, to sort of jump on issues early and not let them manifest into problems. Um, we, so with the facilitate, um, I don't know, I'm finished there. So I could go back, right back. But what I wanted to do is just break down that facilitation role too. So what, what the aim for that facilitation is that we want to facilitate better relationships between landholders, regional communities in the onshore gas industry. So that comes with a lot of that education focus that we try and do and also understand what are the problems. So with with the new focus this year with the Gasfields Commission, we've, we've um, established what is called the SERAT advisory group, uh, the stakeholder advisory group in Brisbane. And that is the pulling together of all of the um, key stakeholders, which, which range from APIA to QRC with uh, key NGO landholder groups with the Cotton Australia, your Ag Force, um, QFF, and Queensland Southern Landscapes with our NGOs. And we've also pulled together, um, worked closely with our government entities in that space too. So we work with those people on what we see arising in the field. So currently, as you all know, we're all in that space of insurance. It was something that the GFCQ facilitated six weeks ago and we all got the key people in the room and they've worked through that. And AgForce has been a really good driving force with us with being able to get the message out to their members. So that's, that's where we can be utilised in being able to support to be able to drive the problems that could um, escalate in getting a really good outcome quickly back to the landholders or back to people that need to be involved in that. So our oversight role, which is reviewing the effectiveness of government entities in implementing regulatory frameworks that relate to the onshore gas industry, so uh, currently we've been given the role of being able to look into um, ways of being able to support and make the land access code more robust. So that, that is a focus of ours initially too. Um, the advisory role is through that advising ministers and governments and entities about the ability of the landholder regional communities in the onshore gas industry to coexist with an identified area. So in response to that, I'll just quickly say we've been handed the re review of the um, Regional Planning and Interest Act, that part of the act where it is the assessment criteria on priority ag land. So we've been handed that. So through our um, uh, bringing together of all the key stakeholders, we will look at all these aspects that we've been handed by the Queensland Audit Office to be able to work through with information to be able to better support changes that need to be um, had. So, and just in uh, being able to finalise what I'm saying tonight is, Wednesday is our first uh, Surat stakeholder advisory group. So as the Brisbane-based one is based with all the, the the, the top 
echelon of our communities or our key stakeholders, we too have put together one here in Dolby that actually encompasses landholders and also um, our local government and um, a couple of the NGOs that want to be a part of that so that we can really focus on the field-based problems that are happening at the moment. So we're focusing at the moment in this area on insurance, but also subsidence and the review of the um, RPI Act. So they're things that we're going to start kicking off on Wednesday and we'll work through those in the next few months. And as we 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 work through this um, facilitation process of these, these uh, organised meetings, we hope to duplicate that in the areas of Roma, in June, Tarun, Wondon, and then take it up as a, on an as needs basis. We'll, we'll move that up more into central Queensland. So I won't keep talking because I'm probably done in my 10 minutes. But if you'd like to stay connected with the Gasfields Commission, please, we're on uh, LinkedIn, as I said, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and our website. So thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Jane. That was terrific. I'll just let everybody know Jane will be coming to our bluff this Wednesday night during the AgForce CQ meeting run. Yep. Yes. Okay. Our Jane will be at bluff on the 15th, uh, Wednesday night, and then Thursday morning at uh, Middlemount and Thursday night at, um, at Nara. Okay. So are there any questions? Um, I've got a question. Um, um, hi, Jane. It's Mark Collins. Um, I'm I'm up at um, Mara um, yep. in, in CQ, and um, it we've had a pretty good relationship um, with the Gasfields Commission. They've you know done a power of work up here over a good many years. We've had them through you know various um, forums come and provide information to us and so forth, but um, there's a fair bit of chatter at the moment. Um, we haven't got a, a liaison officer from, from you people, he's, he's left and um, we're, I don't know, the chatter is that the, the word is that um, he's not being replaced, is that correct? No, that's not correct, but what, what's, so, the focus of the Gas Fields Commission is to be supportive in areas that of need, okay? And we're a really small team of 10, and you're correct. We spent a lot of time last year, when Carolyn Collins was the uh, CEO, spent a lot of time in Banana, Mara, and those sort of areas. As you would have heard, Westside have scaled back their activity within that area. They've mm -hmm. gone back to, like, just a field maintenance uh, role within their work. Um, the release of the QEPs in those area, areas are really important to us. But as you know, that is the exploration part of any sort of activity, which then could proceed for years. Like it could be one, two years down the track. But Mark- No, it's a slow you, burn, yeah. Beg your pardon? It, it is a slow burn, the, yeah. um, the exploration phase, yes. Yeah. So, in the coming months, you'll find that there will be more um, focus on where we're going to be trying to um, put, well, not put, but try and engage with um, local engagement officers for the Gasfields Commission. It is a huge focus at the moment. And because of such a small team and a small budget, um, we will be focusing probably more in that Tarun Wondoan area at that those people there can cover, go up north and cover there. And they also can scoot into uh, the Surat and support me in this area. But I've never been adverse to not wanting to travel because I absolutely love getting up there. So last year I spent a lot of time up there and I'm happy to come again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, from what I can gather, there's, um, you know, a little bit of a feeling that, that um, you know, we've been forgotten about and left out. But um, certainly take on board your um, comments there, Jane. And um, yeah. Um, Thanks, Mark. Um, Mark. Look, I, I, you know, it's, um, 
there's probably a lot of areas that would love to have someone like that Roma would be great. Like they'd love to have someone there at the ready too. I know that Taruma Mondolan would love to have someone at the ready there too, but it just comes down to logistics and cost. We don't, we, the funds don't extend to having someone in every particular area. And I suppose with, with COVID, I just feel more confident now in this type of sharing of information and mm -hmm. people know that they can jump mm -hmm. on the phone and ring at any time and get, you know, a key person to be able to address any issues. And I think if nothing else, it's educated us really well in being able to utilise our time more efficiently through these forms of um, networking. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, that's, that's correct. Um, but nothing um, really helps a, a um, um, elderly or um, older sort of uh, landowner than speaking um, face to face, of course. And I did pick up in somewhere in your presentation, and I've made a note here, um, funding for gas fields commission. So um, obviously funding is um, part of the part of the um, you know the world we all live in, and um, you're facing some restrictions as well. So hundred um, percent. Yeah. 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 So that's noted. So. Um, Thanks. Yeah, so, um, um, yeah, hopefully, um, you know, you, you don't face any more cuts. Yeah, well, that's out of my hands. <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Okay, no further questions. We'll hand it over to Noel Brinsley. Thanks, Noel. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Hope the presentation slides showed up on the screens. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah, good day. So um, thank you for allowing me to attend tonight. Uh, this is really, I suppose, give you an overview of the, the type of mapping services that AgForce delivers uh, across the state and, uh, and how, you know, uh, certainly for the last uh, nine, ten years uh, through our previous coal seam gas project that we also delivered certain mapping uh, services and, and workshops. Uh, as Jane said, certainly one of the key aspects of, of um, the negotiation process is to have a good effective property map. But really, I suppose the aim from here is to say that, you know, really you should be using some form of a good effective property map for your day-to-day -day businesses as well. Um, so I hope this is gonna work for me. Go next. There we go, beauty. Um, so just a, a bit of an overview, it said that I've been with AgForce now for 13, a bit over 13 years. Um, and through that time, uh, the type of, uh, I suppose, mapping or GIS, Geographic Information System Support, uh, we provide from uh, member level right through the uh, organisation, through our, mainly through our uh, policy, uh, looking at compliance um, uh, issues and constraints. And, uh, and especially natural disasters over the last, uh, especially the last 10 years that I can recall. And I suppose the key one here really is the, the training workshops, computer mapping and, and, and GPS. And uh, we've also certainly for a number of years now had a, a number of fee-for-service um, 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 products that can be used for members and or any producers really to come to us and uh, see what we can provide. Um, as I said before, one of our key products here, and that's uh, first started in 2006 under the Ag Forward project, and it was money to do with vegetation management back then. Uh, this product I have been managing since the end of 2007, and uh, it's evolved. And I'm, I'm sort of, uh, especially the last three, four years, one of the, the, the key issues I've had, I suppose, and, and funding certainly uh, is, is uh, the lack of funding, I suppose, uh, sort of limits to what we have been able to deliver. Um, but certainly over the last three or four years, uh, not only did we go out and introduce uh, producers to computer mapping, um, we've actually been able to have enough funding to then also give them the tools. Um, and we're not talking about, I suppose, what you could use in Google, Google Earth or Queensland Globe. It's about actually using a mapping program that actually enables them to ask questions of their business. And uh, certainly once you've got everything mapped um, from a coal seam gas and negotiation process, certainly be able to use that mapping tool to look at creating your no-go zones, your buffer zones and those sort of things as well. So uh, in fact, uh, we've not long had some um, uh, approval from state government to get out and do um, 
um, 12 mapping workshops across North Queensland this year. And uh, we're gonna take them on a 12 month journey. So we'll go out, do the initial workshop. They'll bring their own computers. They will start that mapping process at the, the first one day workshop. We'll have a series of uh, follow up uh, Zoom webinars so that can, we can actually link in and see their maps, see how they're progressing. And then about three months later, we'll go back to those 12 locations and deliver a follow up day. Uh, again, to review their map, but also to introduce them to other sources of information that could potentially be used uh, for their day to day business planning. To assist in that, we've also, since 2007, uh, delivered our one day GPS essential workshop. Uh, again, it sort of links in with property mapping. Um, yes, you can access a lot of good imagery, but um, uh, sometimes you can't see everything in imagery. So, the use of a handheld GPS to get out and capture the remainder of the information uh, is essential but also uh, use your mapping to um, uh, site out new infrastructure or plan out new infrastructure, proposed infrastructure, uh, upload that to your GPS and um, go and site, site that new piece of infrastructure. And certainly over the last seven, eight years with the introduction of uh, smart devices, uh, not everyone needs to use a handheld dedicated Garmin GPS, for example. Um, certainly there, there are apps available that could assist in that process uh, to achieve the same results. I suppose the beauty about having a smartphone, you can also be taking photographs um, of the mapping program we demonstrate with. Uh, they can attach those photographs to those um, mapped features and start to build up good sources of information. Um, as highlighted by Jane, it really comes down to what sort of things should you be mapping. Um, in this case here, uh, I'm just gonna move this screen so I can see a bit here. Uh, here's just an example. And effectively, it's everything pertaining to your property. Uh, from uh, you know, the land details, the tenure lot and plan, uh, there's the photograph assessments, your, your uh, management areas, your zones from cropping to grazing, uh, you know, water infrastructure, everything. Effectively, everything that you've got that runs your property uh, should be mapped. Um, and effectively, that then is your baseline. Um, as mentioned before, that um, you know, especially if you can also map out those areas of good productivity, because if you've captured a number of uh, years of information, uh, if you've got a, a good effective farm management system set up, not only do you have your map, your computer map part of that, you've also got other modules of information, could be grazing, cropping, um, that can link into your map and then also allows you to start asking questions of your, of your productivity. And again, yeah, you can demonstrate that uh, you, you potentially don't want those areas affected um, through the negotiation process. So. Uh, and that's what we're aiming to achieve on these mapping workshops is say, well, you know, you, work, you know what you've got on your property. Uh, here's a bit of a plan sheet. Let's tick off what you need to map and then get that process started. And this is an example of the Belmont properties outside of Rockhampton, uh, probably about five years ago, we were tasked to get it mapped um, again. And, um, and this is just an example of paddocks, uh, those red, red outlined areas and also the water infrastructure as well in regards to water features. Uh, we, but again, we've got everything mapped from soils to pipelines, to power poles, power lines, um, and, and everything that actually pertains to, to that property. And as I said, that then becomes your baseline. So effectively, when these companies show up, you present your map, as you can see on the screen there, and then they may then allow you to overlay what their thoughts are in regards to their infrastructure plan, in regards to the wells and the infrastructure to run those wells. And again, using that information, you can actually start to look at, so try and direct it, I suppose, from the negotiation process, what um, is going to work for you. And that's just an example of what potentially could happen to uh, through the end of the negotiation process where you can see what was proposed um, to what the end product was. Okay, so again, it's just being able to have your property map to, that you can use for your day-to-day -day business. Um, and so you've got everything there you require. So when these negotiation, when you go through the negotiation process with these wholesome gas companies, you can start to use that as a very powerful tool. So this is what it was potentially to, this is what it ended up being. Um, and certainly to be able to access this, the image was only captured on the 6th of July. This is one of the satellites that can actually, uh, you know, recapture images, images across the whole world every five days. And this just gives us an idea about how you can see that uh, coal seam gas infrastructure has been fit into these properties, especially around the center pivots, for example. Um, and you can certainly see grazing areas in there as well. So 
the fact that yeah, you've got all, all this sort of rich information you can uh, you can tap into, and this is all for free, and uh, it's just a matter of about having an effective property map um, that you can actually bring in and start to build up that rich information about your your business. Um, if anyone's interested, we've certainly got a number of workshops coming up um, between now and the beginning of December around the state. Uh, Jinjin at the end of this month, and then I'm out to west, south, uh, southwest uh, next month for three workshops, and then the 12 across the north of Queensland between August to early December. Um, all of them have, we can actually provide out a 12 month mapping subscription. We uh, use the Ag Data product uh, because their property mapping module links in with other parts of the Phoenix product to build a good farm management system. So there's plenty of workshops coming up around the state. Um, so certainly uh, jump onto the Ag Force website and if you're interested, certainly register. Now they're all for free, uh, except for the Southwest. There's a small payment there that um, our funding state body has requested, uh, which we're actually going to use towards those follow-up workshops. And that is it. Thank you, Sarah. Excellent, thank you. No. Hey, I do have one question from uh, Michelle Shelley. Uh, do we have an app uh, that we can use on our phone that can um, uh, can use satellite imagery is difficult uh, on our property because of the areas of trees are too thick to determine the fence line? Yeah, look, that's certainly I suppose it, um, I had a look again just to refresh my uh, memory today because it's certainly um, uh, last probably seven, eight years that we've, um, as I said, we've had our GPS workshop and we've actually used that Garmin handhelds. But most people have a smart device, be it a phone or a, a, a tablet these days. And uh, look, it doesn't really matter what app you're going to use as long as that app allows you to upload, download but also to record your information about your property to save those files as a GPX in the GPX file format. And then that will actually allow them to import that file into another, a, a number of mapping programs and, uh, and also uh, platforms like Queensland Globe. So as long as they remember GPX, uh, that file will work in most programs. And apps, that... yeah, look, a couple of apps I had a look at today. There's one called um, GPS Tracks, uh, Avenza. It seems to be a popular one. Is a free version of that, um, and again, they come with sort of, you know, base maps of around the whole country, which are reasonably okay to use. Um, but again, it's just being about getting out, getting a lock on your phone with those either of those apps, um, and then having connectivity to your computer afterwards. Good on you, Noel. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay, well, thank you, Jane and Noel for coming on tonight. Um, as I said, Jane's going to come on the meeting run with us this week and next week. And um, we're going to have a rest for the uh, afternoon session. We'll see you um, back in August. Thanks for coming, everyone. <laughs>